Today, I want to tell you about two of the most useful tools in Adobe Illustrator, Align and Distribute. With these two simple tools, you can do a lot of really great things, centering things, adjusting things, making things line up pretty, even with you're doing individual anchor points rather than objects, making cool shapes. So let's dive in. First off, where are you going to find this tool? So you might see, depending on how you have your workspace organized, you might see this logo over here where you get this align window, or what you might see it up on the top bar. You can also go to window, align, or you can get this with Shift F7. So lots of options in order to pull up this align window. And then once you have this align window, you have a lot of options. So let's talk real quick about the kind of things that we're going to do. You can look at the logos and see a basic idea of the kinds of operations that it can do. So you can either align to horizontal um, or vertical, or you can distribute the objects, or you can distribute the spacing. You also have options as to what you want to set as your reference. So do you want to al align or distribute them to the artboard? So to this like white space behind you, do you want to do it to a selection or do you want to do it to a specific object? And so we'll go through examples of each of these, but here are the sorts of things that you're going to expect that we'll cover. Now let's go through them one by one. First of all, what is the idea with this reference point? The reference point is basically saying, okay, well, we want to shift these all so that they align with the, say, the left side of this object or the middle of that object. It kind of defaults to doing it to the artboard. So the artboard, if you go over to the symbol over here or you go shift O, this is your artboard tool. And so each of these are an individual artboard. I like to use individual artboards as a way to kind of make individual figures because you can export individual artboards. I'm just give them a name and you can export them as files that way. But for now, just know that it's kind of this backdrop that we can align things to. It's going to default to that if you have a single option object. So for example, if I click on this, you'll see that it's aligning to the artboard. That's the only thing it really can align to because I don't have another thing to kind of compare it to other than the artboard. So if I were to say align it left, you would see that it went like this. If I aligned it right, I'd go like that. Let's go ahead and align it back to that horizontal middle. But what happens if you have multiple objects? First of all, how do you select multiple objects? Well, there are multiple ways. Right now, I'm on the selection tool, which you can get to by V or by pressing this black arrow. You can select multiple options by kind of like dragging over them. Or what you can do is you can click on one, press shift, click on another and another. Be sure to keep holding down shift or else it will just click, like deep click one and um, click on the next. That's going to kind of select them all, but what if you say, I, I don't want to kind of like take the average or I don't want to take the extremes. I want to align things to a specific reference item. You can designate a key object. So here, this is like aligned to selection. If this will kind of average them or go to one of the extremes, I'll go over these in a second. But if I go to align to key object, well, now it's going to be aligning to that. Let me show you what I mean. If I drag and select several objects, and now I have it to set to align, if I set it to align to artboard and I align left, well, they would all go to the artboard, the left of the artboard, the extreme left. I'm gonna undo that. And now let me say, okay, well, let me just um, align to this reference point, or I want to align to the selection. So now I go to align to selection, and it's going to align it to kind of the most extreme one in the case of one of these um, kind of extreme side lines. If I were to align it just to horizontal align left, it's going to take it to the to like the most extreme left one. If I do the align to middle, it kind of takes them to the average and I'll go over these in more detail in a minute. But say I don't want to do that, I want to align them to the left of this object. What I can do is click on that object. Now, I did not hold down shift while I clicked this. If I did hold down shift, it would have deselected the object. 
So when you're selecting multiple objects, you want to keep shift held down while you select them. But then once you've selected them, click on the object you want to make a key object. And now it's the key object. So if I go to align left, you'll see that everything gets aligned to that. So just to reiterate, if I want to select multiple items, I drag over them or I go to I click shift and I click them one by one. Now, without holding down shift, I click on the object I want to designate to be a key object. And now that's my key object. If I change my mind, I just click on another one. And if I change my mind again, I click on another one. And as long as they're in the group, all's good. Or not the group, but in the selection. I'm going to be talking mostly about aligning objects. But it's important to note that you can align all sorts of things. You can align groups. Or what I love to do is align individual anchor points. To do this, instead of using the select tool, this V or this black arrow, I want to use this white arrow, this direct selection tool, which I can get to by pressing A. With the direct selection tool, now what I can do is click on individual anchor points. I can now align these anchor points. Say, for example, if I wanted to align all of these to make this bottom figure, I'm gonna click on the anchor points I want to align, so I want to align this, I'm going to hold down shift, click another anchor point, and hold down shift and click another anchor point. If I go to align to selection, they're going to go to the most extreme. So if I click on this, this vertical align, they'll all go to the top. That's what I wanted to see. However, you might get different results if you're aligning to a key object. When you're aligning to key objects for individual anchor points, it's going to be the last one selected. So for example, if I were to go and I select this one, and I select this one, and I select this one, just like I did before, but now I go to a key object, it's going to do it to that orange one. So if I align like this, you'll see that the lines go down. So just be sure to keep that in mind when you're choosing how to choose your selections. Now let's focus back on aligning objects. So there are these different objects that you see for alignment, and they're kind of self um, explanatory based on the little pictures, but we'll just go through them one by one. Say so I have these three rectangles, this blue rectangle, this purple rectangle, and this orange rectangle. If I click on each of the, if I select all of these, so I'm just going to drag to select them all, and note I'm back now on the B, the selection tool, rather than the direct selection tool. If I have these all selected, and then I'm just aligning to selection, not to any key object or anything. If I click this horizontal line left, you'll see that they're all going to align left. If I click the horizontal line seven, um, center, they're going to align to the center. Note that here they kind of align to the most extreme left, whereas here they're kind of averaging the middle. And if I go like this, they're going to align to the extreme right. You can do the same with top and bottom. And again, if I select them all and I don't have a key object selected, if I align to the top, it's going to go to the most extreme top. The middle is going to kind of take them all to average, their average middle. And the bottom is going to take them to the extreme bottom. And indeed, this is what we'll see. Now let's look at an example where we're aligning to a key object. So just to re reiterate, if we want to select a key object, we select them all using the direct select tool, and then we click again without collecting shift on the object that we want to make key. So here the purple is key, here the blue is key, and here is the orange is key. You can use a key object for any of the align options, but for now, let's just practice by aligning to the top. What I want to do is I want to select all of these objects, and now I want to make this blue object, the, so, um, the reference point, the key object. Now, if I do vertical align top, you'll see that it's going to align them to the top of the blue object. If I want to align to the top of the purple object, I select them all. I click the purple object, I align to it, and you can see they all shift to it. And that would be the same as if I didn't set a key object because the purple object was the highest top. But if I want to align to the bottom or say, then it wouldn't be the case. Or I guess it still would be the case for that, but if I want to do the left or the right, it would be different. Okay, so if I select now just to the orange to tie things off, we'll go, down, uh, we'll go up to the top of the orange, which means going down for most of them. And you can see that here we're aligned to the top of the blue, here we're aligned to the top of the purple, and here we're aligned to the top of the orange. That's a line. Now let's talk about distribute. We can distribute either kind of the 
extremes or the middles of the objects, or we can distribute the space between the objects. So it's distributing the objects themselves or the space between them. In either case, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be shifting the objects that are in the middle so that they are spread out in um, spread out equally between the the objects on the out straight, the outers. So you're not going to change the outer items. You're going to change the inner items, either so the objects themselves are distributed equally or so that the space between them is distributed equally. So let's go through some examples. OK, so the distribute objects are in this align window. So even though it says align, it's align and distribute. And so you'll see actually more that there's more options for your distribution within this align window than there are even for align options. So let's go through that. We have these three objects, and just so for um, kind of making things easier to see, I drew some grid lines on them. And I also have these kind of reference points in the background that will make more sense in a minute. So if I go when I click on the objects, and now I'm going to distribute their vertical distribute tops. You can see now that these kind of lines here are showing you this equal spacing of corresponding to the tops of these items. The blue and the orange didn't move, but the purple did because it's on the middle in respect to these, the vertical direction. We can do the same if we want to distribute their middles. So click on all the objects. I'm going to distribute their middles. And now that you can see that the equal kind, equal spacing, or not spacing, but the equal centering of the objects is well on their middles. And finally, we could do similarly for the bottoms of the objects. If we do this um, vertical distribute bottom, we'll see this, that our equal kind of lining is, is corresponding to the bottoms of the objects. And again, it's just that purple object moving because the purple was in the middle in this um, vertical direction. And well, it's also in the middle in the horizontal direction. So if we distribute things in the horizontal direction, it's going to move as well. Just like the, it works just like with the vertical direction. So I select all my objects. Here, if I want to do their lefts, you'll see the lefts. If I want to go ahead and do their middles, you'll see their middles. And if I want to go ahead and do their right, I'll do their right. You might have noticed that I was going a little faster that time. How I was able to do that was because I had to group these objects. So you click on them and then you do Command G, that'll group them. Once they're in a group, you can kind of just Command A and that will select them all. Because I'm in the direct select mode, it'll select them all as objects. And then I can just click on the thing that I wanted to do. In this case, it was this horizontal distribute right. So that was distributing the objects. But what if you want to distribute the space between the objects? There's an option for that. This distributes spacing. Again, the outer objects aren't going to move, but the middle ones are going to move in order to distribute the space between them, either in the vertical direction or in the horizontal direction. So if I want to say align the, the distribute the spacing in the vertical direction, I select all my objects. I do this distribute spacing vertical and voila. If I want to do it horizontal, I do the distribute spacing horizontal and you see voila. And to make it a little more obvious what's going on, you can see that the spacing between them is now equal. So that is distribute as well as align. And remember that you can do this to objects. You can do this even to groups. You can align groups. You can distribute groups. You can even do individual anchor points. This, this way, it will align to your artboard, to your selection, or to your key object. And you can get to the key object directly if you just um, kind of select an object that's in one of your, in your side of your selection without pressing shift. So you select all the options that you want and then click on it. Um, and that will then make it bold, and that will now be your key object. So I can make the purple my key object, the orange my key object, the blue my key object, or whatever your object is. If you're doing individual points, you want to use the A or this um, come over here to this direct selection tool. Click on the individual points. And now if you want to make a point your key point, you want to just make sure you click on that last. Otherwise, it'll kind of just do the most extreme or the average, similarly to if you had just been doing a line to selection. 
Hope that helps and happy aligning and distributing your objects in Adobe Illustrator. And if you can't afford Adobe Illustrator, check out Inkscape. It's a free alternative. I'm not exactly sure how Align works in there. I'm still need to explore Inkscape some more. Um, I do like Adobe Illustrator. It's very, it's not the easiest tool to use and it's definitely not cheap. But if you get access through your university or institution or something, or if it's something that's just really an important um, tool for you to have, then it might be worth the investment. And so I invested in it a while ago. I got it through school initially and then started kind of just paying for it myself so that I could keep the renewable subscription. And I've just really um, gotten better at it over the years. It takes some time to learn, but Align and Distribute are some of the easiest tools that you could use just to quickly make your work seem more professional, more crisp, um, and do all sorts of cool things.